So we have now solved the harmonic oscillator in two different ways. And you might be wondering, where is the oscillation? You know, how does the harmonic oscillator uh, exhibit the phenomena of oscillation? Of course, to see that, we should ask, you know, what is the expectation value of the observable x? And how does that depend on t? So what is this thing? So let's calculate that. So let's take an arbitrary state of the harmonic oscillator and let's look at the time dependent state, not the time independent state, which are the solutions of the time independent Schrodinger equation. Of course, this would be a summation of the time independent eigenstates, be a linear combination, times the energy dependence that we expect so this is the uh, solution to formal solution to the schrodinger equation where en are the energy eigenvalues and we have just seen that that's given by n plus half times h bar omega where n is a positive integer and uh, this cn eigenvalues are uh, sorry the cn constants coefficients are given by the inner product between psi n and psi. And this is psi is at some fixed time zero. So now we want to calculate what the expectation value of x is with respect to this state. So this is formally given by an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity over x. Then we have psi star that depends on x and t times x and then psi of x and t. So x is uh, the position representation of the position operator. So we can now use these, this expansion in this expression. And then what we will do is we will have is we'll have two summations. So one summed over n integer, another m, and then we will have c star of m times c of n, and then psi of n of x times x psi of m of x. Remember that's the, the energy eigenvalues were real, so the star uh, has no effect on psi. And then the, multiply it by the time dependent factors, which is e to the power minus i, n minus m, omega t, where we have put in the value of, uh, of the energy. And uh, so if you look at this, we can write this as we can bring the sum out of the integral. And then uh, we have c star of m, c of n, e to the power minus i, n minus m, omega t. None of this depend on x. And then we have the integral over dx of psi m of x and psi n of x and using oh and there's a factor of x here and using the fact that we have a and a dagger you know a and a dagger remember were given by square root of m omega by 2h bar and x plus i p divided by m omega and a dagger was given by the Hermitian conjugate of this thing, we can now, you know, invert this relationship and find what x is. So x is going to be h bar divided by 2m omega square root a plus a dagger. So we can now use this expression for x in this, uh, you know, uh, expression. And then what do we find? Well, we would find dx psi of m of x times x psi of n times x. And then uh, using the fact that, you know, psi m and psi n are orthogonal to each other, we will find square root of h bar 2m omega. And then, you know, using the relationships of how a and a dagger act on psi n, we get square root of n here, and then we get a delta function, uh, Kronecker delta with 
uh, Kronecker delta with m and n minus 1, and then we get another term with square root of n plus 1, Kronecker delta of m n plus 1. So if we now put this together with the previous result, then we have the expectation value of x is given by square root of h by 2m omega sum over m and n, where these guys go from 0 to infinity, and then c star of m, c of n, e to the power minus i, n minus m, omega t, and then times a bracket, and in the bracket we have square root of n delta m comma n minus 1 plus uh, we get c star, uh, sorry, we get, uh, here we get square root of n plus 1 delta m n plus 1. So now we can do one of the sums. For example, we can do the sum over m. And then what we get is square root of h 2m omega. So we have n left over. And in the first term, when we had, wherever we had m, will now be replaced by n minus 1. So we get c star n minus 1 times c of n. And then square root of n stays as it is, and e to the power minus i n, and then we get minus m, my, sorry, minus n, n minus n uh, plus 1 omega t, and then the second term we get c star n, my, n plus 1 c of n square root of n plus 1 e to the power minus i n minus n minus 1 omega t and here we see that in the exponential the n uh, cancel out and here we saw that n went from 0 to infinity. But in the first term, the first term when, uh, when n is 0, this is 0. So in the first term, the sum goes from 1 to infinity. In the second term, however, when n is 0, this is 1. So we can change the indices in both of these terms. So we can change this as square root of h 2m omega, if we now change the sum to go from 1 to infinity, then in the first term, what we can do is that we can, well, um, it doesn't change. We have c star n minus 1, c of n square root of n e to the power minus i omega t. So in the second term, we saw that for when n is 0, uh, this is just 1. So we can change this to be the square root becomes just n. And therefore, we replace n plus 1 by n. So this becomes c star n. And this becomes c n minus 1. And then we have e to the power plus i omega t. And then what we can do is that we can say, we can write c of n to be its modulus times a phase factor, which we call e to the power phi of n. And if you do this, then we can rewrite the expectation value of x as sum over h 2m omega square root there is a summation over n which goes from 1 to infinity and then we have the modulus of c n minus 1 and the modulus of c of n 
n times, we have a square root of n and then times e to the power minus i omega t minus phi n plus phi n minus 1 plus e to the power plus i omega t minus phi n minus plus phi n plus 1. So this we can then rewrite as expectation value of x which is a function of t and this is given by uh, 2h bar by m omega square root sum over n where n goes from 1 to infinity then mod uh, sorry mod of cn mod of cn minus 1 square root of n times cosine of omega t plus phi n minus 1 minus phi m. And this is the oscillatory behavior that I promised. So if I look at the expectation value of the position, uh, the average value, that is something that changes with time in an oscillatory manner. So we do get the harmonic oscillator behavior in that limit.